Yo, what's up, people? Jerome here. It has been a while since the last time I've uploaded a video on my YouTube channel. I really told myself I need to start uploading a little bit more. So, as a warm up, and since everybody's been asking me on my Instagram, what camera do you use? What gear do you use? What backpack you have? I thought it would be a good warm up to start with a what's in my camera bag video. So, without further ado, let's go. So actually before the video starts, I just want everyone to know that all of the links of the products that I'm going to showcase are in the description below. So if you do click the link below and you purchase something, a small portion of the revenue comes back to me, which helps support the channel. So your support is greatly appreciated. All right, now let's go. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to talk about the backpack itself. And I'm sorry, I'm going to have to start this video on a rather negative note. This is the Douchebag Backpack Pro with the CIA Pro camera insert and I do not recommend this backpack because it has one major design flaw. When you're outside on the shoot and you just wanna quickly put your camera back down in order to switch your lenses, you have to put it down, you have to flip it over because the zip is on the other side, and then from there you have to like open it up and then switch your lenses. And the annoying thing is that you have to put the back side on the floor, which gets dirty, and then that goes back onto your back. So it gets your t-shirt or whatever you're wearing very dirty. That is not only a major design flaw, but it's an extra step every single time you want to change your lens. So for that reason, I really don't like this backpack. I'm thinking about switching to another brand, but for now I paid for this. I don't want to waste money. So this is what I'm using. It doesn't look like a camera bag, so I'll give them that. At least it looks a little bit better. I like the looks of it. I think that's probably why I bought it. But other than that, in terms of practicality, this is not really the best backpack you can have. All right, moving on to the camera itself, and I cannot show you right now because obviously I'm using it to record, but I currently use the Sony a7 III. I've been using this camera for about two years now, and honestly, for the purpose that I use it for, it fits every single one of my needs. I could do with a little bit more megapixels, but apart from that, it's a very good hybrid between photos and videos. So far, it has fit every single need. I used to shoot on the Canon 6D, which is an okay camera. It's an entry level full frame but I was missing the dynamic range and I needed better quality for my photos 120 frames a second I don't often need that but it's still good to have it but for me mostly the fact that it has so, so much dynamic range especially when I'm shooting at night or just like in darker environment it just helps me so much so the a7 III greatly recommended this is the one that I use every day Okay, so now I'm gonna jump into the lenses that I have. Just for convenience, I'm gonna go from the widest to the tightest. But before I go into the lenses, lens caps, lens hoods, don't need them. I never use them. The reason why is it's always an extra step to have to take them off and then you put them in your pocket and then you switch lens and you forgot that you had the previous lens cap inside your pocket. It gets lost very easily. I don't use it because anyway, I have a camera backpack and it has paddings all over the place so it would never scratch the lens. I also do have a UV protective filter on it, but I still rather do that than every single time when I'm on a shoot, having to switch lenses and take off my lens cap, lens hood and everything, it takes space. I just ditch them, I don't need them. All right, so now I'm gonna jump into the lenses that I have. So the widest I have right now is actually a pretty new addition to my gear. It's a 10 millimeter full frame lens from Voigtlander. And the reason why I got this is because my friend Koki was using it in Tokyo. He would get some insanely wide angle shots of cool architecture. I would say most of the time this lens is pretty useless. It is practical for if you're doing architecture, if you're living in a city like New York, Shanghai, Tokyo, perhaps Dubai, places where really you have like tight spaces and you want to get like crazy wide angle. I would say most of the time like a 14 is enough, but um, I currently don't have a 14. And this 10 millimeter full frame lens has really got me some insane shots that I didn't even think about before. So yeah, I've been having a lot of fun exploring the city with this one. So my next wide zoom lens is a 17 to 28 from Tamron. I got this one because it's lightweight, it's cheap, and it's pretty compact. So for vlogging, this is a pretty good lens. And honestly, compared to its competitor, the 16 to 35 from Sony, the G Master, this is so much cheaper, so much lighter. It is missing a couple of millimeters, like, you know, if it would go until 14 millimeters, for example, it would be pretty good because 17, sometimes you're missing a little bit of something. But if you are looking for a cheaper, lighter lens to do vlogging, for example, this one greatly recommended. So next to go together with the 17 to 28, I got the 28 to 75 from Tamron. So look at this, super compact. This literally, if I need to go on a quick shoot, like just for fun, 
or if I'm just like walking around the city and I need to take my camera, I just take these two lenses and it's more than enough. 17 to 28, 28 to 75. So from 17 to 75, I don't have any overlap. I don't have any loss of millimeters. So honestly, if I'm just like walking around the city, I just take these two. The 28 to 75 compared to the 24 to 70 G Master from Sony, it's pretty comparable. The lens is sharp, it's reliable, it focuses really fast and it's lighter and cheaper than 24 to 70 so if the budget and the weight is a concern for you then i'll recommend getting the 28 to 75 from tamron rather than the 24 to 70 from sony okay next up we've got a prime lens and actually my favorite prime lens it's the 35 f 1.4 from sigma it's an art lens it's absolutely amazing. I mean, ever since I got this, my portrait game has been taken to another level. I've done so many portrait shoots and I can actually almost do like a full portrait shoot only on this one. The bokeh on this one, I can get so much blur and depth of field. It's great for low light shots as well. Great for B-roll, great for pretty much all purposes. Yes, it's a prime lens, so you can't zoom. But since I got this 35, it has really taken my photography and videography to another level. So this one is my favorite prime lens by far. Another prime lens I have is this one right here, which is actually my only Sony lens that I own. It's so cheap, so light. This, in my opinion, is a lens that everyone should have in their camera bag just because it's light, it's cheap, you can just toss it inside your camera bag, it doesn't take much space and it does come in handy for many many situations so especially if you're starting out in photography this one highly recommended another prime lens that i have is this new addition to my camera gear it's the 85 1.4 from sigma it's an art lens and i just got this recently because i was filming a gig with adobe and i told myself okay it's gonna fall into the budget so just to be able to step up my content for the adobe campaign i decided to get myself this 85 1.4 i haven't really played too much with it so far i only had the chance of filming some b-roll of it but it has turned out to be absolutely amazing so far so i'm looking forward to testing this out especially on portraits this in low light is going to be an absolute killer i mean just the simple fact that it can go down to f 1.4 that's going to create so much bokeh on an 85 and yeah i'm looking to explore a little bit more on this and then finally my biggest zoom lens is the 100 to 400 contemporary lens from sigma now i used to own a 70 to 200 f 2.8 for my canon which i have sold now and I decided to take this 100 to 400 because sometimes I just want that extra little bit of zoom compared to the 200. But the thing about this lens is that it's not an art lens, it's a contemporary lens. So while it does a pretty good job in zooming, sometimes it's not the sharpest. I don't really like the fact that it's a variable aperture because that means that every single time I zoom from 100 to 400, it's gonna go from f5 to f6.3, which if you're shooting, for example, wildlife like I was on my recent trip to Tanzania, you have to readjust your shutter speed. I don't want to have to readjust my shutter speed if I'm chasing like an animal. I'm not 100% convinced by this lens, especially because it's not the sharpest. Maybe if it was an art lens, it would be sharper, but... So perhaps next time I consider a zoom lens, I might go back to a 70 to 200, although the G Master is pretty expensive, but I haven't been 100% convinced by this one. It still ended up getting me a bunch of very, very good shots, but it is a struggle to get that image like really, really sharp. It was good for my Tanzania trip because I needed something like this for wildlife photography but yeah it's not the most convincing lens. It does the job. Alright that's it with the lenses so now for aerial footage I currently use the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. I've had this drone for about two years now it did take quite a lot of beating but it still flies. The gimbal is a little bit funky but honestly I've gotten so many good footage with this and I've been able to sell some usage rights for some of the aerial footage that I got in New York, in Finland, in Japan. I am considering changing to another drone, maybe something that's a little bit more compact but so far this has been doing the job so I don't need to spend some money on a new drone. The gimbal that I currently use for all of my commercial shoots is the Weibo S from Zhiyun. Honestly, I just got this because last year during the pandemic, I had a video gig and I needed a gimbal. So I just took the lightest and the cheapest one that I found, especially because my Sony is pretty lightweight. So if I combine that with another lightweight lens, it does the job, it does pretty good. I've shot a bunch of videos with this and so far it has been doing a pretty good job. I would consider switching to a Ronin from DJI, but so far I don't really need to. So yeah, I'm happy with this. The microphone that I'm currently using right now to record this video is a microphone from Sennheiser. It's called the MKE 400. And what I love about this microphone is that it's so small and compact compared to its competitors. And it actually has an inbuilt windscreen, which means that if there's a little bit of wind and I need to record, it's not going to take any of the wind. In case of extreme wind, I still have this dead cat that I can put on top of the microphone to take out all the wind. But for most of the situation, if I'm recording myself, say on my skateboard in New York City, I wouldn't need this dead cat. It would just 
remove all the wind with the inbuilt windscreen. So it is a compact and highly directional shotgun microphone and it has an inbuilt wind protection and integrated shock absorption. It's perfect for vlogging and it did save me a couple times when I was in Tanzania as well. Oh that my god! I mean, you what wouldn't have liked it. It was boring. <laughs> <laughs> the most amazing things I've ever done, honestly. It's crazy. Yeah. Insane. So many great shots. <laughs> so pumped. So many live shots. Like, that was it's the incredible. once in a lifetime. The fact that I have this very compact microphone inside my camera bag at all times, it is going to come in very handy. Now, of course, in the last couple of years, mobile photography and mobile content has become king on social media. So this one very simple thing that changed my content is this DJI Osmo. I currently use the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, which has come in very, very handy. You've probably seen some of my posts and taste stuff that I do on Instagram. I just stick this on top of my tripod. This tripod is a very cheap tripod that I got on Amazon. Link is in the description as usual. I've been doing this DIY drone footage just using my phone, this gimbal, and this regular cheap tripod that I'm using to get insane drone footage in places that I usually cannot drone. So this has really stepped up my game in terms of getting some very smooth mobile footage, whether I'm traveling or I'm in New York City. It has really changed up the type of content I produce as well. So honestly, this one, it is such a game changer. And for the price that it costs, it just levels up your content to another level. So this one, I cannot recommend it more. Last but not least, a couple of accessories. I do have a bunch of filters inside my camera bag. So I often use the CPL filter, the black promise for portraits as well. It has come in very handy. A dust blower. Especially when you're shooting videos or time lapses, you don't want to have a dust on your sensor. I can't tell you how many times my friends have saved me by having those inside your camera bag. Every photographer should have this inside their camera bag at all times because it's so light and it is going to save you. All right, that is it for this What's In My Camera Bag video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, all the links of the products are in the description below. I am going to start uploading more and more videos on YouTube, perhaps doing some travel vlogs, but also explaining some behind the scenes in photography. So if you don't want to miss any videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.